welcome back bros to another video review and today we have the opportunity to take a look at the Transformer Legacy Voyager G2 Universe Jaxxas. So here I am a little zoomed in hopefully it shows that on the camera but I just want to show you the details on this figure. I definitely like how they picked out the face with the yellow face and then the I guess you could say it's like a green color eyes. There's no lead piping, unfortunately, but I like the red helmet with the silver going around. It kind of reminds me like a breathing mask, like he's scuba diving or something like that. Or he's got that like red beard type pirate vibe to it. Not only that, I like how they did the wings in that green, that like grass green and then he has like sort of some sort of shoulder flashlight or something like that or scanner, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, just looking at the details on the figure, yes, it is molded in that pearl white. The chest cockpit area is in molded in the black translucent with the golden yellow color painted on top of it to get to sort of match the rest of it throughout the figure, which I don't have a problem with. And I think the figure looks great. And then looking at the shins, take a look at all the circuitry right there in the shins. I think that's really cool because this is the first Transformer I've ever seen with that kind of exposed in his shins. And I think that's really unique and cool. And not only that, guys, they gave us the hinge pin fingers. Well, not really fingers, but the option to be able to open and close the fist. So that's very awesome. And I thank Hasbro for giving us this type of quality for a Voyager size figure. So for the articulation on this figure, it's just like any other Voyager, in my opinion. The arm can go up this high. It can not, it doesn't have a butterfly, so it can't go in and out, but the bicep does bend more than 90. It has a bicep swivel, as you can see. It has a wrist swivel, as you can see. The hands can open and close, which is very cool. It does have a waist swivel, as you know, because of the transformation. The leg can go up this high. Because of the new technology they put in the hips, it's a square right here. And it's uh, kind of smooth, so it can move very high. And then for going back, it only goes back this far because of the way the square is right here and it's getting hit by the torso region. So that's okay. And then for the knee bend, it's more than 90 as you can see. It also has a foot rocker right here. So you can rock it to get some of these dynamic uh, spread apart poses. And then that's how high you can rock it forward. And then you can also rock it uh, down this way. So with all this being said, this concludes our articulation for J-axis. So alright guys, this is the comparison part of my video and I just wanted to showcase the G2 figures that I currently have out in front of you with J-axis in the middle, G2 Megatron, Laser Optimus G2 Prime, Sandstorm, and Ramjet G2. And they look good together and I like how well they scale with each figure and how it scales with previous figures that we already own and yes, I do know that I am missing the G2 side swipe. It's somewhere packed up in storage. And I'm also missing my G2 Rotor Storm. But I'm not sure if we got anybody else in the G2 color scheme that I'm aware of. So I'm definitely looking forward to them making more of the G2 characters to actually fill out the line. Because I don't remember seeing a lot of the G2 characters in stores. I know I remember seeing, you know, like the the green Dinobots back in the day, but it would be nice to start getting some of those G2 uh, renditions of these characters that we like and we love. Before I end this part with the comparisons, I just want to show you that the Jaxxas figure is definitely bigger than leader class G2 Laser Optimus Prime. And the only reason why Prime is the leader class, of course, is because of the trailer. Other than that, they could have technically made Jaxxas a leader class if they would have gave him a lot more accessories, which would have been cool. But anyway, let's continue moving on with this review. So now it's time for transformation.
So now that we have Jaxis in its alt mode, I must say this chunky, beefy looking space airplane or or what I like to call it, it looks like a space rocket or a space missile. It looks cool. And I like the colors on this alt mode and it definitely works well with the color paint palette scheme and also robot mode. I definitely like how right here the translucent black plastic is painted to like a shiny metallic yellow, which is sort of similar to where on the feet. So I definitely like that. Not only that, I like the bright red nose comb and I like the Autobot, well, not Autobot, but G2 Decepticon symbol right here on top of the cockpit. And I think that looks really cool. Uh, I got the weapon stored on the, on the, uh, the top of the vehicle mode like it's a, a cannon mount so yeah this vehicle mode looks really good and this vehicle mode would be a hundred percent better if they could have added landing gear to pop out from the red nose comb and also the flip out wheels like they did with the classic star scream and the seeker mode back in the 2000s that would have been perfect on this figure but anyway let's go ahead and continue with this review and take a look at some comparisons with other g2 decepticon figures in their alt modes compared to jaxis so here we have all three figures together and they look good together they have that neon um and bright color paint palette schemes with all three figures but as you see right here Jaxis is the smallest out of the three figures present now he is the tallest when it comes to robot mode but in vehicle mode he's very sleek and slender so he's not very bulky as you see with the g2 megatron is definitely thicker and wider and then you also see that with the g2 ramjet mode and not only that, but the G2 Ramjet mode represents also the Sandstorm and any other Seeker modes that you may want to display this figure with. And from the side view, they're all about the same length except the Megatron G2 might be slightly a little bit longer because of the way the cannon sticks out in the front, which is the attachment, which becomes his blade. But other than that, um, Jax is just a tad bit shorter than Ramjet. Because, you know, Ramjet is a cone head, so it has to fit that nose comb over top of the actual head. So it's a little bit longer. But other than that, I do believe they scale well. And I like the way they look all together as a trio. Before I get ready to wrap up this review, guys, I just wanted to show off that Jai Axis has tons of 5 millimeter ports where you can plug them up on flight stands to get those dynamic flying poses. And not only that, you can use that in robot mode to have them in those uh, more um, aerial um, stances to take on the G2 Autobots. So the first category in the Yeah Bro rating is going to be the paint job. And the paint job on this figure, in my opinion, is terrific. Yes, the figure has white molded pearl plastic, but I think it works well with the painted golden color yellow on the translucent chest. And not only that, it's pretty close to the yellow plastic that's painted on his shins, his feet, his hands, and his face. So with all that being said, this paint job to me is definitely screaming G2 and I like it and I enjoy it. So hopefully when you get this figure in your hands, you'll definitely enjoy the paint color scheme also. The next category in the Yerbro rating is the molding. And I must say that this is the first time we have seen this mold. And I'm not sure if it's going to get a redeco or a repaint to be a different mold. But I am impressed with this mold because it works very well. On my copy of the figure, the knees are very sturdy and they're not loose. The feet can definitely swivel on the side to get dynamic poses. I definitely like the fact that they've given us hinge hands so they can be open and closed. And then while it's still closed, it holds the weapon very well. So I definitely like that. In addition to that, it's given us the foldable and playable wings. You can have them displayed in multiple options with that. And then the molding on this figure, when I opened it, yes, one, the, the right forearm was a little loose, 
but it's not that bad. So I know each copy will be different, of course, when you open it out of the packaging, but I am definitely impressed with this figure. It is very good, and I like the molding on this figure. The last category in the Yerbro rating is the execution and playability. And this figure has a ton of both. I like the fact that it's like a spaceship slash uh, rocket ship missile airplane, which is really cool and futuristic. And it definitely gives me those G2 vibes of what this figure would be like if it was in the G2 Transformers cartoon. Not only that, its wings give me that Star Wars slash Gargoyles type vibe to it. And I think that's pretty cool. And kids are going to like that. Not only that, but the best part of this figure, it transforms into an alt mode. That's an airplane or some type of jet. And then also into a menacing G2 Decepticon leader, Jiaxis. Which is, for me, this is a first, and I don't remember much of this character, but I like the way this toy presents itself, and it makes me want to find out more. If you're interested in picking up the G2 Universe Jaxis, feel free to check out Amazon.com because it is in stock. So until next time, bros, please like, subscribe, share, and comment. By doing these four actions, it shows my channel a tremendous amount of support and also positive feedback. Thank you once again for taking the time to watch my video, and I really appreciate the time you spent doing it. Until next time, yeah bro, I'll see you soon. Thank you.